Once we've had a cold night followed by a warm day, it's time for us to collect the sap. The process is simple, but with over 400 buckets at our Hubbard Lodge, the more hand helping the better. Here, you can see one of our educators, Barrett, taking the bucket down from a spile that we tapped into the maple tree and dumping it into a five gallon bucket. The amount of sap varies per tree, but if it's a warm day and the sap has been flowing for a while, it is not uncommon for the buckets on our sugar maples to be full. They can get pretty heavy, which is why we like to put them into the five gallon buckets before we transport them to our first holding tank. Even though our buckets are covered to prevent stuff from falling into them, there are leaves and insects that sometimes manage to get by. Not to worry though, our sap gets filtered multiple times before it makes it into a syrup bottle. Once we have a decent amount of sap inside the first holding tank, we will attach a tube from our holding tank that will then go to a motor that then transports the sap up into our larger holding tank on the truck. This holding tank can hold up to 600 gallons of sap. Once we've emptied all the buckets and transported all of our sap into the truck's holding tank, we are ready to transport the sap again at our sugar house. We will attach one end of the tube to our truck's holding tank and then attach the other end to an outlet that leads into the sugar house. From there, the sap will run through a filter and then continue to run through a series of piping that is connected to our final holding tank that's located on the outside of the sugar house. This holding tank can also hold 600 gallons of sap. Once all the sap has been moved to our sugar house's holding tank, we are finally able to start the evaporating process, which will eventually give us maple syrup. Depending on the atmospheric pressure of the day, the temperature at which we need to boil the sap will vary, but it is usually around 219 degrees Fahrenheit. That's really hot, so we have to make sure that we continue to feed the fire so we can keep a steady temperature. You can see that Thomas sets a timer to remind him when it's time to put more wood into the fire, which is located within the evaporator and lays underneath. The sap re-enters the sugar house from the bulk holding tank and uses gravity to flow down into the evaporator through several metal tubes. It flows into this small tank and then back into the evaporator. You can tell that it's mostly water because of how light the liquid is. In the evaporator, sap flows through many tubes while being preheated by the steam. Be careful, the metal is very hot. The sap then continues to heat up as it flows down toward the fire. The sap then flows through this small tank. This pan lets the vapor that you see escape or evaporate. Vapor is the water that is hot enough to turn from liquid to gas, just like boiling. This happens when the sap flows to the bottom of the evaporator, gets hotter, loses water, and gets thicker. Now it's starting to smell like fresh maple syrup. Here's a closer look at that pan that lets the water vapor escape. That's the sap bubbling at the bottom of the tank. This is the temperature controller. The red number, 216 degrees Fahrenheit, shows how hot the sap currently is, and once it hits the green number, we know we have syrup. Here, you can see a better look at the front pan. Look from left to right and notice how the sap gets darker and thicker. Once the sap gets hot enough, it officially becomes maple syrup. The syrup passes through this tank, through the tube, and into the metal bucket. We bring the syrup to be refined, or filter to perfection, and this is our setup. Here is the unfiltered syrup. You can see the dark syrup flow from this tank through the plastic tube. And into this filtration system. John is checking the pressure to make sure that the machines don't break.
This is what a clean filter looks like. And here are some used ones. This is where any remaining dirt and debris are removed. After this round of filtering, you can see if the sap becomes lighter again as it flows into the final tank. And look at that warm syrup. Depending on the time of season, syrup color ranges from light gold to dark brown. This one is medium or amber. And now it's ready to be eaten or bottled. Thanks for learning with us.